Taliban took control of Afghanistan, it sought to use social media to spread its message. And now Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube face the serious decision of whether to allow a government that's considered a terrorist organization and under sanctions uh, by the U.S. to use their platforms, which begs the question, are social media platforms being inconsistent here, given that they banned the former U.S. President Donald Trump? Joining us right now to navigate what is a very thorny and tricky issue, Jonathan Greenblatt, CEO and National Director of the Anti-Defamation League. Also, Kevin O'Leary, investor, venture capitalist, CNBC contributor, and so much more. Now the judge, basically, is what we should call you, uh, Mr. Wonderful. But uh, I want to start with you, Jonathan, this morning, trying to sort of gauge where, where are you at on this? What, what do you think is it? What do you think these, these social media platforms are supposed to do? What's the responsible thing to do? Well, I think it's a great question and the right thing to be asking this morning when we've seen this terror organization take over an entire country. And I would say there's really no rational reason why Twitter should be hosting the Taliban, let alone Facebook, Instagram, or any of these other services. Look, they all have their own terms of service. They call them Twitter rules. Facebook calls them community guidelines. guidelines and a terror organization which suppresses the rights of women, which assassinates journalists, which brutalizes ethnic and religious minorities. I'm sorry, they shouldn't be allowed to exploit these technologies to sanitize their own terror activities. Now, the fact of the matter is, we should acknowledge that Facebook has taken them off, YouTube has taken them off, but it sort of defies logic why Jack Dorsey has failed to do so. I don't think it's that hard I'm glad to see that they've stepped up the right way, and we hope that they'll continue to do that. Kevin, you on the other side of this? I am, actually. You know, one man's terrorist is another man's freedom fighter. And although that statement is difficult to digest, it is a fact. We're watching the governments of China and Russia probably recognize the Taliban for their own self-interests because they want the lithium that's mined there. And the truth is, at the end of the day, it's probably more important for us to see what messaging is coming out of there so we can fight it. I find it a very tricky slope to start deciding on one social media platform or another, what messaging should get out and what shouldn't. I would rather, for the sake of keeping our freedoms and not having people edit what I can see, let it all out there. And I've said this before, the cost of freedom, the cost of freedom of speech, the cost of allowing individuals to make their own personal decisions means that the lunatic fringe will always have a voice. That's the price. It, maybe it's one or 2% of the content, but that's what you have to live with if you want the freedom to actually make your own decision but of what content you can look at Kev, or your family Kevin, can see or what you want. Uh, Kevin, can I just jump in here? And maybe I'm jumping in on behalf of Jonathan. But talking about that freedom, the freedom of choice of a corporation like a Facebook or a Twitter or a Google, which owns YouTube, to make that choice. How do you feel about that? You've always been a free marketeer. It's a policy decision by the board. I am a free marketeer, and I get your point, and I agree with you. They are private. They can make their own decisions. But let me pose a question to you, Andrew and Jonathan, and this is rather sobering. As you may know, I've invested in many veteran-run businesses because they tend to do very well in setting goals and achieving them in the private sector. One of them recently called me up and said, on, on the canceling of Donald Trump, the commander in chief off Twitter specifically. Now, I don't want to get into politics, but that was that man's commander in chief. He did multiple terms risking his life in Afghanistan. He cannot understand how it's possible that an American citizen gets canceled permanently. That voice is erased from a global platform like Twitter, and it could be any senator, could be any congressman, could be any American citizen, and yet the Taliban that he was tasked to go fight speaks to him every day on Twitter. How can uh, that possibly be right? Either of you answer me that question. Wow, Jonathan. Kevin, I, I, I never would have guessed you'd be making the woke argument that one man's freedom fighter is another man's terrorist, but I actually believe in Western values, Kevin like the right of women, girls to be educated, the right of women to work if they want to, the right of religious minorities to pray how they choose. Kevin, I'm also a capitalist, and I absolutely think that there are lots of options on social media for the Taliban other than Twitter. 
And again, whether you're an elected official or a terrorist figure, anyone who incites violence against others, anyone who exploits these technologies to spread a kind of extremism, the companies have the right as publishers to say they choose not to put that on. Now, look, Kevin, again, when you're willing to do Shark Tank Kandahar edition and have Talibs pitch you alongside those American veterans, I be I'll believe your argument. But honestly, Kevin, because I believe in those veterans and their sacrifice and their service, I am surprised that you're making the argument for the mullahs. Like you said, there's always a fringe, Kevin. Let's just keep them on the fringe and on mainstream platforms. Let's dignify those who, who behave with a degree of decency. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.